we were interested in looking at the accuracy of ultrasound, not only in detecting stones, but also telling us how many stones there are and how large they were. There's been a shift towards using more ultrasound as opposed to CT scan imaging. And we wanted to know, was the information we, getting, we were getting accurate enough to help guide patients and guide physicians as to what type of therapy to consider. CT scan has been the gold standard for diagnosing stones for almost 20 years. So one might ask, why even consider an ultrasound? The concern is radiation. Since we've had radiation, we've recognized what a great value it is for diagnosis of not only urological issues, but other issues. But we've also recognized the potential dangers. So limiting radiation has always been a priority, not only for physicians, but also for patients. We identified patients who had had a CT scan and an ultrasound within two months of each other. We excluded anyone who had passed a stone or had a surgery between those two months. If they had a CT scan and an ultrasound, we were able to then compare the results between the two, review them, and see how accurate an ultrasound was compared to the gold standard. We identified 552 patients who'd had a CT and an ultrasound within two months of each other. We confirmed that the accuracy of ultrasound is not as good as CT scan, but that's relatively old news. The sensitivity of the ultrasound was about 50%. The specificity was about 90%. That means that it picked up about half of the stones, but if it said there was a stone, then really there was a stone. What was new from the study was helping us guide physicians and patients as to whether they could rely on how big the stone is on ultrasound, and the answer is no. Unfortunately, the ultrasound was a poor predictor not only of the size of the stone, but also the location and number of stones. If one doesn't have the size and location, it's difficult to counsel patients on whether they should be observed or consider a surgery. If we look specifically at size, one can consider a five millimeter stone or smaller, something that perhaps one would recommend observation, and five millimeters or bigger, a stone that would have difficulty passing, so one might consider an intervention. If one used ultrasound alone, the patient would be inappropriately counseled about 22% of the time. Indeed, with patients with larger stones, about 40% of them would be recommended observation without giving them the option of perhaps an intervention to avoid a painful episode. Despite our findings, ultrasound does have an important role in the management of stone patients specifically in the patient who's already had a CAT scan within the last year. For that patient, we all already have a fairly reliable measure of how large the stone is. Indeed, it may have grown a little bit over the year or the months since the last CAT scan, but the ultrasound will tell us, is there hydronephrosis or blockage? If there is blockage, that's a sign that the pain they are experiencing now is likely related to the stone that was seen on CT scan. In contrast, for that patient who's never had a CT scan or their last CT scan was many years ago, likely another CT scan would be a better modality to use to guide the management of the patient. I think the use of ultrasound may have value also in patients who are not having pain. The real time where you need a CT scan is the patient in pain. One needs to know what's causing the pain, how large the stone is, how big it is, to be able to tell the patient what the next step should be. So this is the largest study to date. One of the limitations is that only 16% of our patients had a KUB, a plain x-ray, in conjunction with their ultrasound. One might predict that having a KUB and an ultrasound together may provide more useful information. In our analysis of that 16% of patients, unfortunately that did not appear to be the case, but perhaps a larger study where everyone gets a KUB and an ultrasound might guide us as to whether that combination would be a good alternative to a CT scan. So in conclusion, the CT scan remains the gold standard for diagnosing stones and guiding their management. If your patient has had a recent CT scan, an ultrasound has great value to look for hydronephrosis and obstruction, and one can then look back at the prior CT scan to help say what size the stone is that's causing the problem. If you suspect renal colic and your patient has not had a recent CT, a CT scan will be most helpful to guide the patient's management.